pop goes Thomas. It was summer on the island of Sodor. Engines puffed and chuffed happily in the sunshine. The children were excited. Today was their summer picnic in the Whispering Woods. Thomas was excited too. He had a very special special. This is the lemonade for the school picnic, Thomas. You must take it to Whispering Woods Halt. Yes, sir. Thomas had never carried lemonade before. He puffed proudly out of Knapford Station. On the way, Thomas went over some bumpy track. Fizzling fireboxes! Rattle, rattle, shake, shake went the lemonade in Thomas's freight car. And then, pop went one of the corks. Thomas couldn't see what had made the popping sound. <laughs> Bust my buffers! That noise was very funny. Thomas stopped at a junction. The Whispering Woods halt is straight ahead. But if I take the left track, it's bumpier. Maybe then I'll hear the funny popping noise again. I'd like that. So Thomas took the left track. The track was very bumpy. Whoa! If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 burst the corks. <laughs> that sound makes me very happy. Then Thomas saw Mr. Bubbles the clown. He was going to the school picnic too. Hello, Mr. Bubbles. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? A popping cork hit Mr. Bubbles. It knocked his big red nose off. <laughs> but Thomas didn't know he'd knocked off Mr. Bubbles' red nose. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. That was fun. I know where there is some even bumpier track ahead. That means more funny popping. This track was very bumpy indeed. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> if I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 ping the corks right into a field of pigs. The pigs were surprised as corks dropped and plopped into the mud around them. <laughs> what a jolly noise. Then Thomas saw some bakers. They were waiting outside the bakery. They were waiting for Emily. Emily was coming to pick up the cakes for the picnic. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? Popping corks hit the bakers oh. and the cakes. Oh. All the cakes were spoiled. But Thomas still didn't notice. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. If I take this track, it will be the bumpiest track on the whole of Sodor. If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. <laughs> rattle, rattle, shake, shake, jiggle the lemonade. Pop, 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 pop the corks. Then Thomas saw James. James was taking the children to the picnic. Hello, James. Isn't this noise the funniest noise you've heard? 
But James didn't think it was funny at all when a cork bounced off his shiny red paint. Flatten my funnel? What was that? Then there was trouble. The popping corks hit the signalman. He was so surprised, he pulled the wrong lever. The tracks changed. James was sent into a siding. James bumped the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. But still, Thomas didn't notice. He was having a wonderful time. At last, Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Halt. Sir Topham Hatt wasn't happy. Thomas, you have caused confusion and delay. Mr. Bubbles has lost his nose. Now he will be late. When Emily arrived to pick up the cakes, they were spoiled. James has bumped the buffers, and the bottles in your freight car have lost their corks. The lemonade is all gone. Suddenly, the very last cork popped and knocked Sir Topham Hatt's hat right off his head. Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes? The funny popping sound that made me laugh? Must have been the corks. This is all my fault, sir. Thomas felt terrible. Now the children couldn't have their picnic. I could put this right, sir. Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. First, Thomas puffed to the bakery. The bakers had baked more cakes, and they were loaded onto Thomas's freight cars. Then, Thomas chuffed an effort for more lemonade. He saw Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles had bought a new red nose. I'm sorry about your nose, sir. And I'm sorry I made you late. Now, may I take you to the picnic? That's a splendid idea, Thomas. Soon, Thomas was steaming back to Whispering Woods Halt. On the way, Thomas told Mr. Bubbles all about the popping corks. They made a very funny sound. It made me laugh. It, it made me happy. Soon, Thomas, you will hear a sound that makes you feel even happier. Thomas was puzzled. This time at the junction, Thomas took the flat track straight to Whispering Woods Hall. Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Hall just in time. Not one of the corks had popped. The children saw Thomas had brought Mr. Bubbles and the cakes. Thomas listened to the children, laughing and cheering. Now, Thomas, that is the happiest sound of all. You're right, Mr. Bubbles. And Thomas <laughs> laughed loudest of all. <laughs> Thomas's crazy day. The engines on the island of Sodor always like to be busy. They like to be really useful. And they like to have fun. One morning, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the steamworks. He had come to see his best friend, Percy. Percy had popped a piston. Hello, Percy. Hello, Thomas. Thomas could see his friend look sad. Cheer up, Percy. Victor will soon have you fixed. But I can't be really useful here. And if I'm not really useful, I can't have fun. Percy, my friend. No more long faces, please. You look like a squeezed lemon on wheels. I will have you fixed by lunchtime. That made Percy smile. Don't worry, Percy. I'll puff back for you, and we can play then. So Thomas clickety-clacked off on the track to see Sir Topham Hatt. 
Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Thomas at Knapford Station. So were Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand, the Misty Island engines. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand giggled and jiggled. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Thomas. Thomas. We're happy to see you. That's right. <clears throat> and I, Thomas, have a very important job for you. Thomas puffed with pride. Yes, sir. I want you to work with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand at Brendam Docks. There is important freight to be loaded by the end of the day. You must show them how to be really useful engines. Of course, sir. Lead the way. We're right behind you, Thomas. That's right. <whistles> But Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzed. Oh my. I told Percy I would play with him. And I don't want to disappoint Percy. But if I play with Percy, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand will think I'm not a really useful engine. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can play with Percy and I can show Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand how to be really useful. I'm sure I can do that. That made Thomas's boiler bubble brightly. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand whistled and whooped. They had never seen anything as exciting as this. There are so many ships, so many tracks. That's right. Who's oh, he? This is Cranky. Cranky creaked crossly. He's a crane. That's right. Then an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Cranky, this is Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand from Misty Island. Please tell them about the docks. I have to chuff away. I will be back very soon. And before Cranky could creak again, Thomas had steamed out of the docks. Percy was waiting for Thomas outside the steamworks. Hello, Percy. Let's play hide and seek. Your turn to hide. Percy's firebox fizzed. He liked playing hide and seek with Thomas. Make sure you find a good hiding place. Don't peep until I find you. Then Thomas raced away to the docks. Cranky was cranky. Hello, Thomas. Cranky doesn't want to talk at all. That's right. It's not my job to talk to engines. Now Thomas was cross. Cranky, you know all about loading freight. Please help Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. I must do something important. Then I will puff back. Cranky didn't like being told what to do. He creaked and he cranked. But Thomas had already whooshed away. Thomas whirred and whooshed. Must find Percy. Must have fun. Must load freight till the job's well done. Thomas was too busy worrying and whooshing to see Percy. Percy was hiding. Percy was trying not to peep. Can't find Percy. Must go back. Must make sure the freight's on track. So Thomas raced and rattled back to the docks, where Thomas could not believe his eyes. Cranky was luring Ferdinand onto the deck of a mighty steamship. Ferdinand wasn't happy. This is not right. Thomas was upset. Cranky, what are you doing? Cranky crackled. You said, help them load freight. Thomas was horrified. I didn't mean load engines. Maybe not. You weren't here to ask. Thomas felt terrible. Unload Ferdinand now, please. Then Thomas felt worse. Cinders and ashes! 
Percy won't be having fun at all. And Thomas wished like the wind out of the docks. Thomas clickety-clacked past Percy's track. Percy? Percy! Where are you? Percy was sad. I'm here, Thomas. You didn't try to find me. You didn't play. This is no fun at all. Now Thomas felt worse than ever. The freight wasn't loaded. Bash Dash and Ferdinand would think he wasn't really useful. And worst of all, Thomas had upset his best friend, Percy. I can't do two things at the same time. Percy was puzzled. What do you mean, Thomas? Thomas thought, and he thought. Then, a much better idea flew into his funnel. Percy, we're gonna have fun at the same time as being really useful. Follow me! Thomas and Percy puffed into the docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand were waiting. We can show you that really useful engines are really fun ones. Thomas and Percy huffed and puffed. First you watch, and then you wait. Then you hold your car so straight. Never hurry, take your time. One by one, you'll have a line. Then you know you've done your best. You've passed the really useful test. <laughs> we'll try our best. We'll have a bash. <laughs> we'll take our time. We'll never dash. We'll huff and puff with all our might. Hooray for you. You've done it right. <laughs> That was fun, Thomas. That's right. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Being really useful is the most fun of all. And even Cranky had to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs>《One of the most special places on the island of Sodor is the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Here, Captain chugs, Rocky rolls, and Harold hovers. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the rescue center. — Good morning, sir. — Good morning, Thomas. I have an important announcement. The engines hushed and huffed. The mayor would like some Joby Wood to build a summer house. He wants the work to start straight away. Thomas's boiler bubbled brightly. This meant a trip to Misty Island. Thomas liked Misty Island. Please, sir, may I go to Misty Island to fetch the Joby Wood? Bash Dash and Ferdinand rocked and rolled. Please, please, can we go too? We know just what to do. That's right, boss. Boss? Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat. That's right. I would like you three logging locos to stay here on Sodor to learn the ways of my railway. Thomas, you and Edward will go to Misty Island to pick up the Joby Wood. You must leave straight away. Thomas puffed proudly. We'll take the tunnel, Edward. The logging loco spluttered and stuttered. You'll need our help. Oh, Wheezy can be wild. And hee-haw. It's just plain crazy. That's right. Thomas was stern. No, thank you. Edward and I won't need your help. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw won't be any trouble to us. We'll show them how to be really useful. So Thomas and Edward clickety clack down the Misty Island Tunnel. With a huff and a puff and a whoosh of their wheels, they puffed onto Misty Island. 
Then they raced and they rolled all the way to the Misty Island Logging Station. Thomas was excited. The Joby wood gleamed and glowed in the sunshine. Edward's firebox fizzed and fluttered. Oh my! This is a very strange place. Thomas chuckled cheerfully. Don't worry, Edward. When I first chuffed here, I thought Misty Island was strange too. But now, I just think it's special. I'll show you around. Edward's wheels wobbled. Very well, Thomas. After you. So Thomas puffed proudly on. This is the zip line bridge. <laughs> and this is the sawmill. It's very noisy. This is the logging pond. It's loaded with logs. And those two are old Wheezy and Hee Haw. They're log loaders. Edward was puzzled. They're what? They're log loaders. They load logs. And they're crazy. Edward trembled on the tracks. Oh, my. Then, Thomas puffed perkily towards the Shake Shake Bridge. And this is the Shake Shake Bridge. We have to cross this, Edward, to pick up the Joby logs. Edward gasped. Don't worry, it's just a bit wobbly. So, Edward wheezed and wished onto the Shake Shake Bridge. The bridge wobbled and wibbled with every wheel turn. Bust my buffers! Then Edward stopped. He was scared. Just then, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rattled in. We thought you might need help. And it looks like you do. That's right. No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rolled away. Then Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Old Wheezy. I'll have these logs loaded in no time. Old Wheezy wished and wheezed. He jiggled and joggled. He puffed and popped into action. Edward was worried. Oh, dear. Don't worry, Edward. You must be firm. Suddenly, old Wheezy grabbed and groaned and whirled and hurled logs everywhere. Logs bounced off Edward. Blistering boilers. And flew past Thomas. Cinders and ashes. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clacked back. Jumping Joby! It looks like you need our help now! That's right! No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rattled away. Thomas huffed to Hee Haw. I know Hee Haw will help us. But Hee Haw had run out of oil. It spluttered and stuttered. Thick black smoke all over James and Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat was cross. Thomas, what is going on? The mayor is waiting for the Joby Wood. Edward is swinging on a bridge. Logs are jumping like frogs. And my shiny red coat is ruined. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. I thought I didn't need help, but I do. And I know exactly who I need to help me. I'll fetch them now. Thomas, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered and chattered down the tunnel, all the way to the logging station. I was silly to think I could do this alone. I need your help. Looks like you do. So we're here to give it. 
do as we say. And we'll show you the way. That's, That's right. right. So Thomas let the logging locos help him. Shake, shake, make me quake. Make me quake until I shake. <laughs> Edward was so surprised, he wibbled and wobbled straight off the Shake Shake Bridge. Then the logging loco showed Edward and Thomas how to catch Joby logs as they jumped through the air and bumped onto their flatbed. Finally, Dash's driver filled Hee Haw with oil. Now it could rumble and tumble logs to the cars. At last, the Joby logs were loaded. Thomas led the engines all the way back to Sodor and to the waiting Sir Topham Hatt. You are all really useful engines. Together, you are a team to be proud of. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Pingy Pongy Pickup. It was an exciting day on the island of Sodor. It was the opening game for the Sodor United soccer team. All the engines huffed and puffed to be ready on time. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. Today is a very busy day. One engine must take the Sodor United team to the soccer field. One engine must take the fans. One must deliver the apples for the halftime break. And the other must collect the dirty washing from Maithwaite Station and take it to the laundry lady. The engines wished happily. Now I must hurry. Thomas, you will decide which engine does which job. Emily was very excited. Soccer is my favorite game. I always puff past the soccer field when the Soda United team is playing. Did you know that the goalkeeper has a lucky pair of gloves? Emily was so busy boasting, she didn't hear her friends. I'll take the team to the soccer field. I'll take the fans. And I'll take the apples for halftime break. <laughs> Wait a minute. What am I going to do? You can take the dirty washing, Emily. Stinky washing? I know all about the Sodor United team. I wanted the most important job. Delivering the washing isn't the most important job. Emily huffed huffily to a junction. She was cross. I don't want to puff to Maithwaite to collect the stinky washing. Then, Emily saw Percy chuff across the bridge. He was on his way to Farmer McColl's farm to collect the apples. Percy has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him. So, Emily didn't chuff to Maithwaite. She took the track to Farmer McColl's farm instead. Emily huffed her hardest to Farmer McColl's. Percy was being coupled up to the car of apples. Hello, Percy. I'll help you. I'll be your back engine. No, thank you, Emily. I'm fine. But Emily wanted to help. So, Emily buffered up to the other end of the freight car. She began to pull. Fizzling fireboxes! But Percy was pulling the car from the other side. Then there was trouble. Emily pulled so hard that the coupling broke. The apple car tumbled off the tracks. Apples bounced and rolled everywhere. Percy was cross. I don't need your help, Emily. This is my job. Your job is to collect the washing. Emily didn't want to collect the washing. So, she steams slowly away. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. 
Emily clickety-clack to a junction. Then Emily saw James. James had collected the Sodor United fans. James has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. So Emily pumped her pistons. She had to puff to the junction before James. James, stop! I can help you with your important job. I'll be your back engine. Then the fans will arrive more quickly. But James was going too fast to stop. Out of my way, Emily! But Emily didn't chuff out of the way. James had to screech into a siding. His wheels whirred, and he bumped into the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt, but James was cross. Thank you, Emily. I don't need your help. This is my job. Your job is to collect the dirty washing. This made Emily cross. She really didn't want to puff the Maithwaite to collect the washing. James steamed snootily away with the passenger cars of fans. I want the most important job. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Then, Thomas Puff passed with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas was going to collect the Sodor United soccer team. Thomas has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. Emily pumped her pistons and wished after Thomas. Emily chuffed into the town square. She screeched to a stop. The Sodor United soccer team was waiting. And Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Emily, where are the team's clean soccer shirts and shorts? Emily was puzzled. Then she gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. The stinky washing was the team's soccer shirts and shorts. Emily felt terrible. I didn't take the washing to the laundry lady. Now the team have nothing to wear for the opening game. The game can't take place. And it's all my fault. Emily felt very silly. I thought that all the other jobs were more important than mine. Now I see that all jobs are important. I'm very sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, team. Emily wished weakly. Please, sir, I'll puff my hardest and make sure the team have clean soccer shirts and shorts in time for the opening game. Emily collected the soccer shirts and shorts from Maithwaite Station. Then she huffed and puffed to Marin Station. The laundry lady quickly washed the clothes. These shirts and shorts are soaking wet. They won't be dry in time for the opening game. Emily was very worried. Then an idea flew into Emily's funnel. Please tie the wet washing to my funnel. The washing can dry in the wind as I race to the town square. Emily chuffed and puffed proudly along the tracks. The wet soccer shirts and shorts flapped and fluttered in the wind. Now, the team will have clean washing for the game. My team will be clean and ready to play. Go Soto United, the best team today! Hooray! Everyone waved to Emily. And Emily tooted back. Emily huffed happily into the town square. She was just in time for the soccer game. Here are your clean, dry soccer shirts and shorts. The Sodor United soccer team cheered and clapped. Emily felt very important. Good luck for the game. Two, four, six, eight. We're the team who won't be late. Sodor United. 
<laughs> Everyone laughed and laughed. And Emily blew her whistle loudest of all. Henry's health and safety. The engines of Sodor all want to be really useful. Their wheels were, their pistons pump, and their boilers bubble brightly. But sometimes things can go wrong. One morning, Henry was huffing happily. He clickety-clacked around a bend, straight into an old freight car. Flatten my funnel. Who left that there? Henry's piston rods were bumped and bent. Oh, my! Henry, I will chant you to the steam wax. Thank you, hero. Victor was pleased to see Henry. Kevin and I will have your pistons pumping by lunchtime. We will, boss. So, you bashed into an old freight car, Henry. Someone must have left it there. Health and safety, Henry. Henry was an old engine, but he didn't know what health and safety was. Health and safety, Henry, is watching out for things that might make accidents happen. And you, Henry, had an accident. Bam! Later, Henry was fixed. Watch out now for health and safety. Anything dangerous must be taken away. If not, bam! Thank you, Victor. And Henry chuffed carefully out of the steamworks. Henry chuffed and puffed. Then, he saw a flatbed of telegraph poles. One pole rolled slowly off and onto the tracks. Henry was worried. Bust my buffers! An accident could happen here. I must get Rocky. Henry puffed into the rescue center. Rocky, come quickly! Rocky was worried. You'll have to ask the rescue manager. I might be needed for an emergency. This is an emergency. Health and safety. Rocky was puzzled. But health and safety sounded important. So Henry shunted Rocky quickly away. Henry and Rocky puffed to the poles. Lift them out of the way, Rocky! Later, Rocky and Henry had put the flatbed safely into a siding. Henry was pleased with himself. Health and safety is the way to keep the tracks clear every day. You're right, Henry. Now I have to go back to the rescue center. Hello, Percy. Percy was puzzled. Bubbling boilers? I thought there were telegraph poles here. Health and safety, Percy. And Henry puffed away with Rocky. Henry and Rocky chuffed to a junction. Henry saw four large rolls of wire. Henry was worried. Oh, my, Rocky. If one of those rolls across the junction, an accident might happen. We must move it. Aren't you going to ask first, Henry? This is an emergency! Health and safety! Later, the rolls of wire were safely in a siding. Henry was happy. Health and safety is the way to keep the tracks clear every day! You're right, Henry. Now I have to go back to the rescue center. Then, Henry saw Percy again. Hello, Percy. Flatten my funnel. 
I thought there were rolls of wire here. Health and safety, Percy. Percy was puzzled. Now the telegraph poles and the wire have gone. But Henry was too far away to hear. Henry was steaming slowly to the rescue center. Then Percy raced past. Cool your pistons, Percy! Slow and careful is the way. Health and safety every day. But Percy was in too much of a hurry to hear. Later, Henry and Rocky chuffed cheerfully along. Suddenly, Percy whooshed round the bend and stopped. Oh, no! Oh, dear. What's happened, Percy? I've puffed too far too fast. Now I've run out of water. Henry was worried. Rocky will have to move you, Percy. Health and safety. And before Percy could wish another word, he was swinging high above the track from Rocky's long crane arm. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham had arrived. He was cross. Rocky! What are you doing with Percy? It's health and safety, sir. Health and safety have a time and a place, Henry. But now there is an emergency. I need Rocky to help Toby. And Percy has looked all over the island for the telegraph poles and wire he has to deliver. Henry felt terrible. I should have asked if I could take Rocky. And I should have asked Percy about the poles and wires. I'm sorry, sir. I wanted to stop accidents, but instead, I have made them happen. May I take Rocky now to the emergency? Yes, Henry. Right away. So Percy was lowered with a bump and a jump. Then Henry raced Rocky to Toby. Toby's cowcatcher had caught, and he had derailed. This was an emergency. Now I must help Percy. On the way, Henry saw an old freight car on the track. He was worried. Fizzling fireboxes, health and safety. Then Henry saw Thomas. Thomas, why is this old freight car here? Don't worry, Henry. I have to shunt it to the coal yard. Henry felt happy he had asked, and he puffed quickly on. Henry picked up the rolls of wire and the telegraph poles. Then he chuffed cheerfully away to find Percy. Henry found Percy by the water tower. Percy couldn't puff. A tree had fallen across his track. Oh, dear, Percy. Can I help? Yes, please, Henry. Henry knew just what to do. Henry chuffed to find Rocky. Health and safety is the way. Just ask first to save the day. 